Welcome to another edition of the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast. I'm Donald Grodoff, family coach with FamilyOCD.com and FocusedHealthyFamily.com. In the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast series, I delve into the hidden characteristics of OCD, anxiety, and anxiety disorders. The things that most people don't see, that are behind closed doors, and shut within the mind about anxiety. My goal with these podcasts is to bring about awareness of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or OCD. Understand that I am not a doctor, therapist, or counselor, and the content, information, resources, and ideas that are talked about and brought up here in these podcasts are things that I have used, discovered, or have been recommended to me, and I always recommend to seek additional professional help in finding solutions for yourself. Thank you for listening, and enjoy the podcast. This podcast was recorded on March 15, 2017. This is podcast number four called Compare Myself to My Old Me. In our last podcast, I talked about the idea of normal. You know, I had clients coming in always talking about, I just want to be normal. I just want to get back to normal. And in the podcast, we talked about, you know, what what is normal and that we tend to look at somebody else's normal and compare it to ours and make it part of ours or, or that's what we consider normal which is not correct because everybody outside of ourselves norm is really different even though it may be uh, it may be something that uh, we can or cannot do we compare ourselves to others and in this one that's what I wanted to talk about is the idea of comparing myself to others, but even more deeper than that is comparing myself to my old self. You know, it's amazing what comes at you exactly when it is needed. You know, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And I recently had that scenario. And speaking of teachers, I was recently with my mentor, Jan Luther, who is one of the founding masters of EFT. I did my mentoring and training through her for my certificate. And I was a client of hers for years, I mean, since 2003. She recently worked with me, and she was always very good about pinning on me exactly what was going on and see, kind of seeing through me and be able to help me to get past it, and which I really admire about her. And this recent time, she pinned something on me that was a little harder to take ownership of. She, stole, she told me to stop comparing myself to my old self. It took myself back a little bit. I was like, wow, it, it kind of made sense, but it was really kind of hard to conceptualize and to really think about. But I knew I had to change, so I really wanted to to work on that. And, you know, with our life, I can see that being very true because before my daughter's stuff with her OCD, before my heart attack, before really life got really complicated and we had, you know, financial struggles, before that time, maybe it was when I was single, maybe it was when I was first married, and everything was good. You know, I had a good salary, I was working for a company, doing a lot of different stuff, and it was a good, fun life. And so I think now, I look back and go, oh, those were the days. Oh, that was the time. And it's not so. I have changed dramatically because of the things that happen. I tell customers a lot of times, clients, that you can't jump from here to way out there in a journey in your life 
because you need all the experiences that happen in between. All that, that journey is really what it's about more than the end result. Because in life, you really never get to the end result. Because when you do, you're not going to be here any longer. You're going to be dead. And I came close enough to that. I don't want to do that again. So it's, it's really about enjoying the journey in between and not really wanting to be back at the square one, even though sometimes that's easier when you've had a rough journey like we've had through our life. So when I'm working with others now, I, I see that we we all do that to some degree or other. One, we you know, we're comparing ourselves to better times. You know, before there was anxiety, before there was disorder or trauma, or or just life being complicated. We we dream of the days when life can be less complicated. You know, I think about that too. You know, right now all life for me and I think even for the world is very complicated, very some fears and things like that going on. And I think back, wow, wouldn't it be nice to go back to, I don't know, maybe the 50s where, you know, things were booming and all this. But I'm sure if if you were in the 50s at the time, it wasn't about the time. You There was probably still very complicated times for people, financial struggles, whatever it might be, that caused trouble. So going back and looking back at time doesn't always mean that that was the perfect time anyway and things change I change you change in that that journey that you go through in life so any moment can can be very different so comparing to better times well they might have been better then but you're a different person now now it might be comparing to a wonderful childhood and that no longer is happening because you're an adult. And comparing to a wonderful childhood would be great, but you were, you know, five or ten years old. Now you're, you know, maybe in your 30s or 40s, whatever. You're a very different person. And you've had changes because of life's journey that make it impossible to go back to a childhood. Besides, the childhood was so simple. Now, you might be comparing yourself to how others perceive you or see you, which would be really tough because you can't get in their mind. You can only assume what you think they see of you. And I believe that even if they told you how they perceived you, it may not be as accurate as it needs to be. So it really be, would be foolish because that's their view of you, not your view of you. So any one of those is pretty much impossible because of the fact that you move on. And it's only setting ourselves up for problems or failures by doing that because it then shows up more of, of what maybe you don't have or you, you don't want in your life. It just emphasizes it even more. And besides that, you may not be fitting the standards and norms of other people and that's okay or as I talked about in the in the norm podcast it might fit you right now to follow what somebody else is doing and compare against that and follow it for maybe a while it still would be a falsehood but you might be able to follow it until they make the turn that you don't want to make that their life turns that way and <clears throat> you don't see yourself going in that direction. So you would be then stuck again. So it's really following your own standards and your own norms that really can guide you. And so really you want to compare yourself to the moment. That's because that's really all we have. You know, I, I do some reading with, uh, an author called Neil Donald Walsh. He wrote these books called Conversation with God, which were pretty inspiring to me. They were a different type of reading. But in there, he talks about every moment is a death. It is a death to that moment, to that minute, to that second. And the next moment is different. 
It may look the same, but no, it's like almost like a snowflake, I would think. It, it's in some way, shape, or form, that new minute is a new chance for a new beginning, actually. And I, I really admire him for that coming up with that idea. You don't really get that minute back, even though you'd like to stay frozen sometimes in that place. And you, you can realize that you're doing that, that you're comparing yourself to the old self or to somebody else for that matter. But understand that you really need to bring yourself up to date. You know, you got to raise that five-year-old that's inside of you. You got to raise that, you know, 19-year-old to the 40-year-old you might be or something of that sort. Now, you know, when you do that, you may realize that, well, you know what, I don't know that I like who I am. And maybe that's why you're comparing yourself to your older self, because you don't like who you are right at this moment. And so it needs to, you need to, uh, to look at it even deeper at that point. Why don't you like yourself the way you are at this moment? Because really the only time you have is this moment now, that right now. You know, I, one of the ministers I used to go to used to say, um, yesterday's a canceled check, tomorrow's a promissory note, all you have now is this moment. And that is very true because you really can't do anything about the past and you can't really know about the future because it hasn't happened and you don't have a crystal ball. So, yes, you, you really need to understand to bring yourself up to this point now and compare only to this point now. How am I doing right now or to the minute before? <laughs> and again, you may not like what you're doing now or who you are now. But here's what I would say to be able to start changing it. Here's where I would say you need to start. You need to be able to accept who you are right at this moment, whether you like it or not. Because that who's who you are, and to do anything else would be a falsehood. And the only thing you can do is accept yourself to be able to move ahead, to make it better. Because I always say awareness to me is one of the first steps in healing. Because you have to really be fully conscious of what's going on to be able to solve it. So you really want to compare yourself only to the present me. And if the present me isn't one you really want to compare to, then let's look, take a look at what it is that you're missing in the present me, or what it is that you're doing that you don't like, and become aware of it. First step. Probably the hardest, I think, because accepting ourselves, <clears throat> I find with my clients, is one of the hardest things to do. So begin now to look at this present moment of who you are. Don't beat yourself up about it. Find a way to accept yourself and be aware of what's going on that, that you need to change. And that's where you can begin. Begin there. Begin by comparing only to yourself and begin comparing only to myself right now. Or at the worst, maybe a couple minutes before. <laughs> but start. Because that is your awareness point. That is the beginning of your journey to really being able to Live a life where you don't have to compare. So begin there. Find the present moment of you. Be in that moment. Accept that a moment. And begin to heal that moment. This concludes this podcast. Please remember to leave comments for me because that really helps me to understand what you're looking for and helps give me fodder for the next possible podcast. 
Also, I'd love to hear your invisible wheelchair story if you're willing to share it. If you are, feel free to go to invisiblewheelchair.com and click on Tell Your Story. Now, if you've heard these things and you feel like you need further assistance or some help in what you're going through, and you want to spend some time with me working through those issues, then feel free to book a session at FocusedHealthyFamily.com or FamilyOCD.com or simply call me at 704-562-1630. Finally, don't forget there is a tap-in recording following this podcast you may want to take advantage of. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast and will join me for the next one. Remember, keep tapping, talking, and transcending your life into new heights. Thank you, and have a great day.